Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we are going to be talking about the recent sales numbers for Pokemon Legends Arceus, and why it might tell us that the mechanic changes that Game Freak made in this game might need to be the future of Pokemon, ditching the classic formula. Let's jump right into things. Pokemon Legends Arceus released at the end of January of this year, and when we got the newest sales figures from Nintendo a couple weeks back, we saw some very interesting things. I did a whole video talking about the sales numbers for Pokemon BDSP, how they are the best-selling Pokemon remakes of all time, much to the chagrin of many members of the community. But also in that report was Pokemon Legends Arceus, a game that reviewers and fans alike agreed was a major step forward for the franchise. One that many people are hoping leads to some bigger changes in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet at the end of this year. The games up to this point have sold almost 13 million copies. One game, a difference for Pokemon, a, game, a, a series that usually releases them in sets of two. This game in just a couple months sold 12.6, nearly 13 million copies. That is a major achievement for Game Freak and for the Pokemon company with a game that they took a lot of major gambles on, completely redoing many of the systems and formulas that the series had been sitting on for decades. What can we take away from that as a community? Should a lot of these changes remain in place, or should Pokemon move a little bit back towards the main classic formula for the next generation? These are the questions that we're going to be discussing until we see more from Scarlet and Violet, quite frankly, and also probably for the next generation or two. Pokemon sometimes likes to take their time with adopting changes wide scale. We sometimes see changes introduced in one gen that don't really fully become part of of the Pokemon franchise until years later. One of the weirdest ones came in Generation 2's Crystal when the anime, when the sprites of the Pokemon in battle moved, but that was completely cut for some reason. A stylistic decision, apparently, on the part of Game Freak for Ruby and Sapphire and Fire Red and Leaf Green, and it didn't come back until Emerald. Something so basic as giving more personality to the Pokemon in battle took multiple sets of games to fully be adopted into the franchise, and then it was continually evolved throughout the sprite era until we made the jump to 3D. So we have seen in the past Pokemon be slow to adopt quite simple changes sometimes. So it's going to be interesting to see how they approach a lot of the changes that were made in Legends Arceus, ones that many people praised as moving the series forward. Changes such as more dynamic battles, the seamless shift from the overworld into Pokemon battles, the ability for Pokemon to go after the player character in the overworld and to always have them existing in the overworld. A lot of these changes have been tinkered with in generations past in one way or another, but a lot of them were brand new. We had never had the ability for the trainer character to faint in the overworld. We never had the ability for Pokemon to pretty much just kill you at some point. These did not exist. The inclusion of different berry types in Legends Arceus as lures for the Pokemon had not been seen outside of the Safari Zone in games past. A lot of these changes I think are really good, and I think you can incorporate them into quote-unquote main classic generations of Pokemon with gym battles and all of that without completely stripping away what made classic Pokemon so good. Now, before going further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab as well. See if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that is always greatly appreciated. Let's get right back into the discussion. I don't think Pokemon Legends Arceus should completely take the place of a lot of the elements of classic Pokemon. I don't think we should only have boss battles with Pokemon and no more gyms. This was actually an interesting evolution from what they had done in Sun and Moon with Totem Pokemon. They'd kind of took it a step further in Legends. I've said this from the very beginning with Legends Arceus. In my perfect world, we are getting more Legends games in the future that use this same formula, either going into the past or going into the future even, and using this more action-adventure RPG-style gameplay. But there are a couple things that I want to pick from Legends Arceus and incorporate them into every single 
future mainline Pokemon game. A couple of them are the very basic ones that I mentioned in my review. The ability to change Pokemon moves on the fly from a drop down menu, just like you would with held items or in other RPGs, different skill trees. That is something that needs to always remain intact. The ability to send out your Pokemon everywhere and just look at them and kind of interact with your squad is such a really good world building element to Pokemon and really just inculcates the player into feeling like they're part of the world. That feature needs to remain. There are more subtle inclusions that also need to be in every single Pokemon game. I can't stress enough how good the changing nature of the Jubilife Village throughout your gameplay was for the immersion of the game itself and for driving the narrative forward. Not only did the story with the other villagers and their interactions with you throughout the game change and reflected some interesting stuff from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers uh, of you being the outcast, but we'll get into that in another video. But the village evolved and changed and grew as you did. And it happened in two different ways. By completing different tasks that the villagers gave to you, you were able to expand the fields, expand the farming access in the village, up the aesthetics of the village itself. Also, the village built more homes, populated the ranch with Pokemon, and just grew and expanded as you played. Dynamic villages and cities and civilizations in Pokemon need to exist moving forward. There needs to be side quests in every single Pokemon game moving forward, a bevy of them. Them because they are excellent to allowing you to do more in this game than just driving the story forward and it gives you more of a reason to backtrack and go back to different areas and it just increases the playtime of the game but it also is a major way to expand those cities and expand those towns because you're getting rewarded for your efforts and you're also seeing the world change with you as you put more time into the game i can't tell you how much this dynamic village atmosphere just did so much for the fact that the game only really had one civilization. This was really the only city or town in the game. There were other little uh, little settlers, villages with tents and different things for the Diamond Clan and the Pearl Clan. And there were temples and things for you to explore, like up where Snow Point eventually is in the present day. But this was the major hotspot. It would have been much worse as a central hub for your character if it was not changing and evolving as the game continued. The dynamic nature of the Hisui region and of the Pokemon world in Legends Arceus, both the player character, the NPCs, and the world itself, that is the biggest thing that never needs to change moving forward from Pokemon. It needs to be firmly adopted because it makes the open world atmosphere of a game better, first of all, and we know Scarlet and Violet is going to be open world and seemingly every Pokemon game into the future is going to have this same format, but it allows the world to breathe. It allows the world to reflexively react as time goes on. It makes it feel less static. It's a criticism that many people had towards the Pokemon franchise in the past, that the world felt not really lived in, felt kind of static. It's one of the things we praised when they would add Pokemon into the overworld. It made the world feel more lived in. This is a way to do it. These are the major things that Legends Arceus needs to push into the future of Pokemon to change the classic formula forever while still preserving what people enjoy, which is the gym badge progression system, the evil team, the exploration of a region, different towns and cities and routes to explore. But you can do all of that while keeping so much of what made the world of Legends Arceus so, aste so aesthetically pleasing. That's what I think. Those are the changes I think from Legends Arceus need to be moved into the future of Pokemon, and I would love to hear what you guys think of my suggestions down below. Are there other things from Legends you guys want to see put into the future of Pokemon? Are there things you don't want to see return in a non-Legends game? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to support me, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the subject matter. We're going to have a lot of Pokemon videos coming. The summer is here. It is going to be an awesome time to be a Pokemon fan, so make sure you don't miss any content. With that being said, I have been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.